Hi guys, long time. How are you all? My name is Mohammed Yasser. I'm a Microsoft MVP and I do lots of videos on YouTube on finance and operations application. I recently also launched a ultimate masterclass on finance and operation, which is the only course available on the internet where every single aspect of finance and operations is covered and they are in one place, which will be an ultimate reference material or a starting point for anybody getting started with a career in finance and operation. Please do check it out. The link is in the description. Okay, with that note, so today's video is on as you would have already noticed in the title on landed cost scenario using a purchase order and a charge code. Charge code is not a new concept for us. We've already seen charge codes in the past and we all know that the charge codes usually used to handle those additional handling fee or a transportation fee as a part of your purchase process. But a lot of my subscribers did ask some questions around uh, how do we now pay back to those third party vendors on all of those charge codes which are sitting in the purchase order, right? So again, this is going to be a scenario based video as you all like my scenario based videos. This is again, another scenario based video for all of you. So let us first uh, uh, check the scenario. Let us first try to understand the business scenario uh, and then get started with the demo, okay? So, uh, so here is a scenario. This guy is an importer, a small scale importer, and he very often imports this particular material from this particular vendor. This vendor is a preferred vendor, and we import this particular material um, into the facility, right? So this material is costing the vendor, um, uh, costing the importer $1,000, okay? So he would uh, pay the $1,000 to this vendor. So we owe $1,000 to this particular vendor. But that's not it because this vendor is not going to transport the stock to us. We rely on another third party company who is actually a vendor too in my system. This guy is the one who is going to help me in transporting this material to me. So he's going to bring a truck and he's going to load this particular item and help me transport it. So the cost of the material, as I said, is $1,000. Whereas the cost of my uh, transport plus insurance, which he's going to charge me $200. So $1,000 I owe to this vendor, $200 I owe to this vendor, but together, my inventory cost is going to be 1200. So I need to make sure that 1200 is getting posted to my inventory as an inventory cost and $1000 is paid to this vendor, $200 is paid to this vendor. Of course, $200 will be kind of a charge code in my purchase order, uh, but that is something that we already know, but how are we going to now uh, pay the $200, which is in the charge code, to this vendor, right? So this is a kind of a question being asked uh, by a couple of subscriber. So thought of addressing this, okay? So let us uh, exactly do and demo this same uh, scenario. So let's create a purchase order. And we are going to create this purchase order for the vendor one, right? So let's create one. So I'm going to assume the first one in the list as vendor one. So let's give it to that warehouse. And the material I'm going to purchase is going to be that one. Uh, to keep it simple, I'll just keep it as one quantity. And we know the price, it is going to be $1,000 as you can see here. And uh, this is, of course, going to be supplemented with some charges, which, okay, I'll add it at the header level. So let us add a couple of charges, right charges and insurance. I'm going to keep it simple again. So this is going to be $400 and that's going to be $400 as well. So one more thing to understand here is within this particular charge code, 
the charge code is uh, set up in a way that it gets debited to the item because this landed fees or the additional charges i want them to be a part of my item cost as well right the item is thousand dollars plus two hundred dollars so i want them to be part within the item inventory cost so it's getting debited to the item and it's going to be credited to an account that i have uh, um, set up oh i will not use this maybe i will um, <clears throat> try to change this to this one okay so i have set up a account with the name purchase fee because i wanted to use a liability account so this account is uh, the liability account that i have created uh, and uh, this account is the one where all those liability which i owe to the vendor to are going to be temporarily part okay so that's for the freight charges and that's for the insurance <clears throat> insurance are going to be accumulated here so they are called purchase fee they are sitting inside the charge code okay just remember that now let's go all the way back and process this purchase order and receive the raw material oh i'm sorry i think i missed a step so let's now let me double check whether it's it's there good uh, let's now go ahead with confirming a po and then receiving it okay let us receive it so as soon as we receive it i will i will show you the voucher we have seen it several several times i'm not going to spend too many too much time on the voucher but i wanted to just show you the inventory cost so i have received the po and now if i go to the product receipt voucher any guesses what will be the cost price which gets posted to the inventory that's your um, inventory account right uh, is it thousand or thousand two hundred if anybody have said thousand two hundred then you're wrong thousand is the right answer because we have seen it so many times during the product receipt posting it's just a temporary posting it only considers the item cost price it doesn't consider the landed fee that is the additional costs the, this will anyways be reversed and the proper cost will be posted at the time of invoicing okay for now it's just thousand dollars okay so now let's go all the way back uh, let us now invoice the purchase order okay purchase order is successfully invoiced and upon invoicing you'll get the journal and uh, as you all know uh, at this stage the inventory account is actually posting 1200 meaning it includes your uh, item uh, cost price plus the additional fee of two hundred dollars and the other temporary ones gets reversed you do not need to worry about it again some journal entries are missing because i have not transferred the sub ledger so let me quickly do this and then go back refresh the voucher and you will see uh, you have the full voucher now you see here the inventory cost is this all matters to me this is what i wanted to show you you see here the inventory cost of 1200 is properly getting posted which is including all the components but the vendor balance is only getting posted for thousand dollars because we only owe thousand dollars to this vendor right so that's only posting thousand dollars here whereas the hundred hundred is correctly sitting in this particular account that we have just tagged inside the charge code right the purchase fee 
so you see we have a separate account for the freight charges separate account for the insurance charges so they are properly sitting in this particular account right now this account do have a balance of 100 100 each okay so this is marking that we are we have a liability we owe 200 dollars to that vendor that is the vendor number two right so right now okay this purchase order is done and we received the invoice we have posted the invoice uh, we will of course do the payment as well so the vendor will be settled and of course this vendor if you also check the uh, let me also show that oh i don't need to show i mean uh, you've already seen the vendor balance is only posted for thousand dollars right and we will receive a pay, uh, we will also do the payment using the same purchase order we know how to do the payment lord we already seen and this is closed but now the question is how do i pay the other vendor right the vendor number two uh, who is actually we are entitled to pay for those two charges right so now let's assume that we received an invoice from the vendor two okay so let's directly do it from the accounts receivable module and let's uh, go to the pending vendor invoices and uh, let's book the invoice this is the invoice to my vendor number two um, vendor number two as i just mentioned it's my dtdc and now i will add a line and i have created a procurement category okay i've created new procurement categories one for freight charges and another i can even have one for all the charges together you know as a whole but i just created one separately for each insurance and we know uh, i mean by the way guys this is assuming that uh, we just receive an invoice and we the landed fees are all always fixed we already know it up front we already applied on a PO and we receive the invoice there are no surprises but in real life there are always some surprises when we receive an invoice the invoice is different from the one we already charged there is a deviation so all that becomes more complex and moreover you have hundreds of transactions going on in the month so reconciliation process etc becomes very very uh, tough but now it's only a small scale import scenario okay so let's this let's say in this month i only had one transaction so one one each and uh, i'm going to say hundred dollar this is hundred dollar the other one as well and uh, this one i have created a procurement category okay and uh, save it and now let's post this invoice okay when i post this invoice the vendor balance is getting shifted let me show you that when we post this invoice now you see here this one has a vendor balance of 200 dollars right so we owe 200 dollars to the vendor number two right this vendor so that's exactly what happened and it's been marked in the system and we owe that to that particular vendor but on the other side um, if i now show you what happened to those charges that were parked in the in this uh, in that account right um if i go to the um uh, general ledger and uh, the main account see the ones that we already did this one let me see if there are any sub ledger that needs to transfer okay now let's go back so if i go and check the transactions you'll see that that's the original um, liability that temporarily got posted when we created a PO 
and that's the one which actually got reversed because when we posted the second vendor invoice the impact of that is it actually reverses the purchase fee which is sitting here uh, meaning it's debits to this particular account and then it actually credits to the vendor account we have just seen the vendor balance sitting in the new vendor so we have mapped this account since we are using the category uh, if you go to the um, the posting profile inventory management posting profiles under the purchase tab under the purchase expenditure for expenses i have created three categories and again this category i have mapped the same account which is in the charge code here and that's how the purchase invoice figures it out usually the purchase invoice uh, um, whenever you use a category they will come and uh, get uh, debited to this account and they get credited to the vendor right so that's what exactly happened and this got reversed and then it actually posted to the vendor which is actual vendor account which is actual liability for us and now we can go ahead and settle the payments to both the vendors as usual and all that is very usual process i hope it is very clear but if you or any portion of this video is not clear is because you lack in certain uh, concepts like charge code or you lack in certain financial basic concepts in that case you will have to go ahead click the link below and subscribe to my master course which will give you a complete clarity on everything okay guys so thank you so much for watching this video see you again in another video again the next video will also be on a real time scenario okay thanks see you again